Hey, how's it going? It's Lee Halliday, and we're in a series where we are using a serverless function to generate a dynamic OG image, and we're deploying that to the Zite Now serverless platform. And in part one, we deployed our first serverless function, which um, rendered some, some static HTML. In part two, we parsed the URL to extract out sort of the dynamic parts of it, the title, the author, the website, all of this used to generate dynamic HTML. In this video, part three, we're going to be writing the contents of the HTML to a temporary file because in part four, we're going to render that temporary file in a Chrome headless browser so we can take a snapshot and get the actual image. Because right now, this is just HTML, despite what the URL may be telling and lying to you about. <gasps> okay, let's get started. I've got this file ts here with some imports and we're going to use these imports to generate a temporary file so we'll export a function called um, maybe write file and this function will take two things uh, the name of the file so we'll say file name which is a string and the HTML that we want to write to that file and the first thing we need to do with these two pieces of information is basically generate the file name that we want. And because um, this coming in, this file name, it may contain some weird characters or spaces or slashes and things we don't want in our file name, we're actually gonna take a hash of this, an MD5 hash, and we'll use that as the file name instead. So to get started, we are going to use create hash for that. So we'll call this the hashed file name and we'll use create hash, and we want an MD5 hash. And the way you use this function is you say dot update, and you pass in the information that you want to basically take an MD5 hash of. So we want an MD5 hash of the file name, and then we want to convert this to a hex format of this MD5 hash. So we say a digest in the hex format. And now we have the hashed file name. But we want it to end with .html, so we'll just add this plus .html to the end of that. So why don't we just start console.login this to, so we can see what it's producing. So hashed file name, like so. So we need to go, it's complaining about these things, so let's just comment them out till we need them. There we go. Okay, so we need to import this function within our card so we can start using it. So we'll import from, oh, I know why. It's because it's the same file name. So we need to call this something else. We'll call this write temp file instead so that it doesn't complain. Okay, write temp file from file. And we will start to call it. So the first thing we need is basically to get the title of um, the OG article that's being rendered and the author. So we'll extract those or destructure them from parsed recs that we did in part two of this series. So now we can get a file name. So we'll say file name is, and it will just be, why don't we do title, author in an array, and then we'll join it with uh, dash like that. So now that we have this file name, which is the title and the author, we will call the write temp file. And we'll pass in the file name along with the HTML that we want to write to it. And right now it's, it's not yet returning us anything, so we'll just leave that as is. And we'll refresh the page. If we were to start our server, Okay, so if it loads correctly, we should see in the console, no, it doesn't. What doesn't it like? HTML is declared but never read. Oh, man. Putting an underscore makes it happy. Okay, we will try again. So we will wait till it renders and then go look in the console. And we can see that it's given us this 
MD5 in hex format .html. So this is an MD5 of the title and the author. And with that, we want to basically write this file to the temp folder. So what we can do now is we can say, um, we'll call it the file path, and we'll use this join function from path, along with the temp dir function from OS. So we'll say temp dir, join that with the hashed file name, and that will give us a file path. So why don't we output the file path just to see what's going on. So we'll reload this, and we'll see in the console. Doo -doo -doo. Okay, so now we've got the file path being slash temp along with our md5 hash.html. So the next step we want to do is basically using this path we generated, write the HTML contents to it. And we'll use the write file function from FS, but this function uses a callback, so we will use the promiseify function from util to basically convert this callback style function to a promised style function. So we'll say const promise write file is equal to promiseify the write file function. So with this, and the reason we want to do this is now that it is a promise, we can use await to know when it's finished. So promise write file. So what do we want to write? We want to write to the file path, which is in the temp folder, the HTML contents. Ooh boy. Okay. What's it? Await is own. Okay. So now that we're using async await, we need to turn this into an async function. So we waited it to write um, the HTML to this file path. So now we will just return the file path like that. So if we come back to this uh, card here, we can now put the file path into a variable. And if you remember, it looks like slash temp, where is it? Anyways, it was like slash temp and then an MD5. And the browser doesn't, won't know how to render that. What the browser knows how to render is file colon slash slash, so the protocol, and then the path to where the file exists. So we will call this the file URL, and we will just make it file colon slash slash, and then we will embed in here the file path. And just because if I don't use this thing, TypeScript's gonna freak out, Let's console.log the file URL. So if we refresh the page and wait till it finishes loading, uh, the reason it's a little bit slow to load is because it's sort of parsing the whole thing again, the TypeScript and whatnot. Ooh, promise. Okay, so what do we need to do here? We need to say we are going to await the file path. Reload this again, and then hopefully, there we go. So file temp. So if I command in a Mac, um, command click this thing, so it's gonna open up this file, which is all of the HTML we had generated, but now it's living in a file. And we can actually, um, if I get out of this and I actually do a cat of this, Oops, I don't even need all of that there, just the slash. I can see that it's written all of the HTML contents right from the doc type, including the CSS and all of this into that temp file. So for part three, we're done. We accomplished the goal of taking all the HTML we produced, writing it to a temp file, so that in part four, we can render this file in our headless Chrome browser and then use that functionality to take a snapshot, produce an image, and then we're done. We've built a dynamic OG image serverless function. So we'll just commit this. Um, what are we doing? We are writing temporary file with HTML content. And we'll push that up to GitHub. And just so you can see how cool the Zite Now platform is, if we come back to the dashboard, 
Within a few seconds, uh, typically it only takes a few seconds, it's going to start another build because it's detected our change that we just pushed. Okay, so it's detected the change I just pushed up to GitHub. It's doing a new build. You can see that it's orange right now. So in about 15, 20 seconds, it will turn green and then we could visit this. So it's pretty cool. You push to Git and in under a minute, we've got our new serverless function deployed. That's it for part three. Hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for part four, where we actually take a snapshot with a Chrome headless browser. Take care.